So here's a Mitsubishi WD73727. It's got the typical solarization of the picture. If I can zoom in here, you can see on some of the high spots, the colors are not accurate. A lot of shadows in the picture. Uh, the color of the menu, which is normally a nice blue, is uh, it's got a lot of greens to it. If I bring up the internal test patterns, you can see the color bars are very much out of alignment here. Typical problem with this chassis has to do with the color wheel. We'll talk about repairing that very shortly. So I've got the back off and now to aid in the speed of the video, I've already removed most of the screws or all of the screws from this one. Uh, start with taking out the four screws that hold the brace in place. They're four short screws, so don't get them mixed up with the rest of them. The brace will come right out in that case. One screw at the bottom of the lamp door and one connector you have to unplug. The lamp door will come right out of there. Um, you'll want to disconnect, move this wire out of the way to pull the LVDS cable out of the way. It just unplugs, release all the clips. You'll want to unplug the majority of the wires from the interface board here. Including there's one that is going to have one screw for the ground wire. You'll want to remove that one. These two don't need to be removed. They'll come out with the light engine so you don't have to worry about it. Now on some models you'll have to remove, there's two screws, one on each side of the chassis that pulls straight out. And on certain models like this one, you'll have to unplug it to disconnect the ballast power connector. Other models will have a connector midway uh, that you can unplug so you don't have to pull the whole electrical chassis out. One connector to the engine power board. I just fold these guys out of the way up here. Remove these from all the little clips they have. There's going to be two screws. One has the ground cables, one screw straight down here. After that, the engine will just pull out. Be particularly careful, there's a piece of foam up here by the lens. You'll want to lift it up over the lens as you pull the engine out. And there the engine is out of the TV. Okay, so here's the optical engine out of the 73 inch Mitsubishi. We're going to rotate it around here and what you want to pay attention to one, two, three screws right here. We're going to take that cover off. There is the color wheel right there. And one thing you can look at is the amount of haze on the back of the color wheel. These should be bright, shiny pieces of glass. You can see where I touched it with my finger right there. You can see how shiny it is. Just the slightest little touch wipes the haze off of it. And this is one of the problems that these sets have is the haze actually gets onto the rotor you can see right there is a color wheel index uh, piece of tape that Mitsubishi puts on there when they manufacture the set. There's actually an optical sensor right down here on this little board and it measures when the, op when the uh, piece of tape passes the optical sensor it sends a signal back up here to the DMD board and it tells the DDP IC where the phase of the color wheel is so it can line up the uh, DLP chip get all the pixels into the right place so we're going to talk about cleaning that haze from the color wheel and then uh, most important about preventing uh, future haze buildup so we're going to start by simply removing the color wheel from the set there are two screws The second one's down low, kind of hard to access. Nothing holds these cables in, they're just loose here, so you don't have to worry about damaging the cables. 
remove the two screws. You can see the color wheel is loose right now. You want to remove the two connectors from the DMD board. Color wheel will just lift out of the TV at that point. Be very careful not to damage the glass at all. We're going to, on this model as well, we're going to remove the light tunnel assembly right here. Three screws. Light tunnel assembly can be lifted out as well. There's the light tunnel where all, all the light shines down through the tunnel right there. This one's actually not in that bad of shape. I've seen some where the inside the light tunnel was white with all the haze and that will severely obstruct the amount of light uh, entering uh, the DLP chip. Next we're going to get into a disassembly of the engine itself to do the repairs on it to prevent this from happening in the future. We're going to start by unbundling these wires getting them out of the way so we can take the top of the optical block apart Now that we've got those out, let's go ahead and disconnect these two connectors. They go to the iris and the actuator. One more screw hiding down in there I didn't see. Very carefully lift up. Sometimes a lens will stick to the bottom of this. Luckily, nope, no lens is stuck on this one. If you look carefully, it's hard to catch it on the camera, but you can actually see um, the plastic is a different color right over here, different shade reflectivity, and that's caused by the ultraviolet degradation uh, from the lamp actually eating away at the plastic, like when you leave a piece of plastic sitting out in the sunshine, this is what happens to it. So we're going to actually uh, repair this today so it does not happen uh, in another two years down the road. Pay particular attention to the uh, way the lenses are oriented in the engine. You shouldn't have to move them, but if you do notice that they are hazy, you may want to clean them. Uh, especially whatever you do, do not loosen these screws. There's two on the top and one on the bottom of the lens. Don't try to move that lens. It is really hard to realign if you ever do move it. Be very careful the lenses. They just sit in here. Nothing actually holds them down. You can look at them and see that these are in very clear shape and you want to pay particular attention to the the way they go back in you can see there's a gap on the lens right here thin part is towards the DLP chip thick part towards the lamp this one only goes in in one direction uh, usually these have some haze on them so you'll want to clean them very gently I use nothing but water and uh, a very soft uh, cloth to clean them so this is the cover for the color wheel and this is one of the first parts I removed from the engine and you can see uh, where it is shiny and where it's not shiny based on the amount of ultraviolet uh, degradation that this plastic has had. We're going to take care of that once again like I said so it does not happen again. The shiny areas are uh, basically new virgin plastic that's never been affected by the ultraviolet light and the dull areas all of this inside is dull where the uh, ultraviolet light has uh, degraded the plastic and caused that white haze to build up on the color wheel assembly. So we're going to start. I've got my roll of tape right here. This is aluminum tape. It's sticky on one side and aluminum on the other side so you don't have to worry about it being affected by the light. So the first piece I'm going to put down kind of loosely right in here. And I'm going to kind of form fit this. So it even covers, I'm going to stretch the aluminum just a little bit in the corners. What's nice about aluminum is you can do that. So 
second piece just like the first piece. Make sure you cover everything so there's no exposed plastic. So now we've got this all done. Just going to make sure that the holes have adequate clearance here for the screws. Next, trim another piece of aluminum tape, just larger than the piece you're working with. Kind of got to work it into the corner here. Just make sure that this whole front piece is covered because that's exposed to the light as well. And then we can trim it away as well. Let's be very careful around this little hole right here. Make sure, because it fits extremely tight, make sure there's nothing in that hole whatsoever. Otherwise, uh, it won't go back together properly. Completely trim out where the lens goes. Okay, there we go. We got that all coated and trimmed. It's all ready to go back together now. All right, so I've cleaned the lenses, I've cleaned the mirrors inside. Everything's all ready. I suggest that you blow out with compressed air before you start to reassemble this at all. Make sure it fits, goes down snugly. May require just a little bit of pressure, but not too terribly much. And remember, we had this screw and this screw had little uh, wire retainers on them. So what I usually do is I'll go around, I'll put all the exterior screws in first. Everything's snugged up. If the center screw, after you put all the exterior screws in, feels like you're tightening it forever and ever, double check to make sure all the lenses are fit back in the little retainers that one of them didn't pop out at an angle. So next we're going to address cleaning the color wheel. The way I like to do it is just simply remove this one screw that holds the optical sensor board in place. Be very careful with the color wheel that you don't apply any pressure to the glass because it, it can break very easily. I've got some Q-tips, some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to start by just cleaning the hub. Get all that haze off of there. Next we'll go to actually cleaning the color wheel itself. Very light pressure. I like to go over it two or three times. And to the final cleaning, to do the final cleaning on the color wheel, I like to use just a soft cloth, paper towel, whatever. It just has water and nothing else on it. Next, we'll just dry it. 